Hi guys, welcome back. So I'm going to show you how I turn my boring, plain, and beat up sandals and turn them into these fun and trendy boho pom pom tassel sandals that you've seen everywhere. So here's what you need. And I'm also using some embroidery floss as well. So first thing you want to clean up your sandals, I'm just using a disinfecting wipe and I'm just wiping the bottom of it, getting off any grime or dirt. You want to make sure you have a clean surface and any details or accents that you don't like, just get rid of. That's why I have my seam ripper here, just ripping off this rosette and throwing it away and any extra residue or st stitches or anything that's on there left from your accents, you just want to remove that as well and clean it up, make sure there's no loose threads or any extra residue on the sandals. So now that your sandals are all plain, you can clean them up a little bit more. I'm just adding some textile paint, which is super optional. Mine are just really beat up. So I just want to add in some textile paint to kind of mimic the color of the sandals, just to kind of fill it in a little bit more, but this is definitely not necessary. Um, you could totally just, I don't know, use a Sharpie or like cover it with fabric or ribbon or leave it as is, so just gonna let that dry. And now, you can use some more optional embellishments, some copper beads. I'm gonna be using a needle and thread, a thimble, we still need some of the thicker material of my sandals. But if you have leather sandals, it might be a little more difficult. First thing you wanna do is take your measuring tape and you're gonna measure on the top of the sandal, if yours is like mine. Of course, if yours is different, you're just gonna measure the area that you wanna add your trim to and you're just going to take that measurement and use that as a guide for how much trim you need to cut. So I measured mine out and I'm just going to take my trim I got in two different colors, yellow and in white. So I'm just going to be measuring that and cutting it out. I am going to be adding a little extra on to it just because I'm going to be turning the trim over so that it doesn't fray and glue that down. So I'm going to be adding probably another half inch of it just so that way I can have a clean edge but you could also use fray check just make sure that your trim is not going to unravel on you so I'm starting back by where the zipper is and just putting it up against there and as you see I'm just gonna go around so getting out my handy dandy glue gun just gonna start in sections just putting a little bit of glue back by where the zipper is and like I said, I'm just gonna be turning the very edge of it under and gluing that down so that way I'll have a nice clean and finished edge and it's not gonna get caught in the zipper teeth at all. I'm trying to zip the sandals on and off. So just make sure that you're going in sections when you're gluing on your trim. Hot glue does dry pretty quickly, so if you end up putting glue all the way around the top, it's gonna dry before you have time to put the trim on. So just work in sections. And once you get to the other side, just gonna finish it off the same way I did at the beginning, just turning it under. So now taking my white trim, I'm going to basically do the same thing. I'm going to make sure that I'm putting it um, right underneath where the first trim is. I just like that look. You can do whatever, you know, what you like. But I'm just moving the pom-poms out of the way first off because I don't want to glue them down as I'm trying to add them to the trim. But I just want to make sure that it's going to be right underneath where the other trim ends so it's kind of really close together. 
But like I said, this is totally up to your style and your choice. So again, just gonna start off with a little bit of glue and that one, and I'm just working in sections, moving the pom poms out of the way. Now we might want to have a clip, like a binder clip, to just clip them out of the way so you can just work. But I don't have a clip, so I'm just, you know, using my hands and just working in sections, putting them out of the way, gluing it a little bit down, pressing down the trim, making sure that it adheres, and then just the next section. And you're just going to do that all the way around. I'm also making sure that the pom poms are kind of in between where the first row is so that they're not sitting on top of each other. I thought it would look better if they were kind of in between so you could see more of the yellow and the white at the same time. And then again, just making sure you're putting it on that M, turning it under so that you'll have a nice clean seam or edge. And now you're done and it already looks so cute and you could definitely stop here and be done and it looks totally awesome. But I want to add on some cute tassel embellishments that I made using this Baker twine that I got from the dollar store. Guys, so cheap and easy. So I'm just going to be putting that underneath the pom pom trim. So here's how to make your tassel. So I'm just taking two fingers and I'm just wrapping the Baker twine around probably about 12 or 13, 14 times. You can do more and make a really fluffy tassel or do a little less and it won't be as full. But you can also wrap it around like a cardboard that's a couple of inches. I just use my fingers just because it's easy. And then you're going to cut another piece of string and you're going to put it inside the loop and you're going to tie it off. As you can see that I'm doing here. And then once you have that, you're just going to trim it off. And so now you're going to have this loop with a string attached to it. So to make it, to turn it into a tassel, you need to cut another string and you're going to smooth all of your loop kind of together and lay it out flat. And you're going to take your other string and kind of tie it towards the top, but not at the very top or the very middle. You're just going to tie it out towards the top of it. And now you can kind of see a tassel forming a little bit. I'm just going to knot it off a couple times. And then trim it off. And now you want to kind of set your tassel free by trimming the very bottom part, just cutting that off, and then cutting any excess off that's uneven. So yay, you have a tassel. So you kind of want to just trim it, make sure it's the size and the length that you want. So I kind of cut mine down to match the other one I made earlier, just because I want them to be a little shorter and not as super long. But you can make them any length you want. It's totally up to you. Use your creativity. So now you want to make a bunch more tassels. I made some yellow, I made some light pink, I did purple, I did like a coral color, orange, teal, and blue. So I want to make kind of a rainbow pattern going from the colors of the rainbow basically from this fuchsia kind of pink all the way to purple. So as you can see here, I'm just laying out my tassels on my sandals just to kind of get a feel for it because it's going to be like a mirrored effect. So I'm just kind of matching it up and seeing what it looks like. So here I have my design all laid out and how I want it to look. I definitely suggest laying out everything before you start gluing it down because once you glue it, it's going to be hard to change it. So you can definitely measure this out and mark where each tassel needs to go. Um, I'm just going to eyeball mine because that's just easiest for me. But if you want to be super precise, you could definitely measure it out with your measuring tape again and use a marking pen just to mark where every tassel should be. But like I said, I'm just going to eyeball it. And the reason I left such a long tail 
on the top of the tassels is so that I'll have something to glue down to. But you could definitely just glue down to the very tippy top of the tassel. So I'm just going to glue that down. Be careful guys, don't burn yourselves. Um, and then I'm just going to knot off the excess string at the top and then cut it away. And then I'm going back in with my hot glue gun and just going to glue down those ends so that they don't fray. Yeah, and I'm pretty sure I burned myself, so just be very careful guys. Hot glue is called hot for a reason, so just be careful. So now that that's done, you're going to glue all the rest of your colors on. And now you're done. You have your cute tassel accents right underneath the pom-pom trim to get the tassels going. But I definitely want to add some more pom-poms. can never have enough pom-poms. So I'm just going to add some pom-poms to the back of the sandals because I don't really want to see that page. So again, the same way you did the top, you're just going to fold it under, make sure that you have a nice clean edge, and then you're just going to glue it down. I kind of did the very ends first, just to secure it so that it'll be a straight line and be uneven or wobbly looking, and then I just went underneath and glued it in sections. And then I did the same thing with the yellow pom pom trim. Kind of getting it close to where the other trim was and then just put it underneath. Definitely made sure that the placement was um, one that wasn't going to have pom poms dragging on the floor. But I didn't want them to get messy. So yeah, look at that. More pom poms. So cool. And you could totally be done. Guys, you could totally just have that and your sandals be done and be awesome. But I'm going to be a little extra. I think the front looks a little plain to me, so I'm gonna be embellishing it with our beads. I'm using this beautiful agate slice bead that I used a necklace that I had got, and I just cut the beads off of it, and I'm using it for these upcycled sandals. And again, here are these copper beads. I'm gonna use it to kind of do an outline around the agate slice. And then I also made a tassel to put on the very front too, using some watery floss. So taking my hot glue, I'm just putting a generous amount on the back of the agate slice because it's really um, heavy because it is a stone. So I just want to make sure that's going to be nice and secure onto this handle. And once the glue kind of has set up, I'm just going to take my needle and thread out. Just gonna double it over and thread it, and just gonna tie a knot at the end because, I, like I said before, the stone is pretty heavy, so I just want to make sure that it's gonna be super secure to the sandal. So since it's a bead, it has holes in it already. So you're just gonna sew it on like you would a button. So just going through the sandal, through the hole in the bead, down the other side, and through the sandal again. I'm just gonna go back and forth a couple of times just to make sure that it's really secure. And once you're done, you're just going to make sure that you knot it off a few times. I'm just going through the stitches a few times. Um, that just secures it a little more. And then you're just going to knot it off and snip off the excess. So I kind of just added on the tassel, just glued it down, and then wrapped it around for a more wrapped look. And then right now I'm just adding on the copper beads, like I said, just trimming around where the agate slice is and then I'm just going to do some on the sides. Sorry guys my voice sounds a little coarse. It is kind of late at night as I'm trying to film this voice over for this video. It's taking me super forever to get this video done but I hope you guys like it. Alright so back to the sewing. I'm just going to go through every single one of these teeny tiny copper beads and yes this took me forever but I just put my thimble on because sewing in, the, in and out through this mini tiny bead, the sharp needle through this material um, can be murder on your fingers. So be careful guys, just 
and here is the finished look. I am so happy with the way these turned out. They are so cool and so bohemian and they look just like all the other sandals I saw that were going from like $70 to the 200 range and here I just took a pair of sandals that I wasn't giving that much love on style and holding away and I got so many compliments on this and you can just go wild with this. Use your creativity. Use all the different types of trim and beads that you want and they're the perfect summer shoe. I've been wearing this like crazy. So let me know if you guys want to see my summer sandal collection because I have some other ones. And if you want to see a summer sandal lookbook, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching and stopping by. If you are new to my channel, make sure you subscribe. And thanks for stopping by and I'll see you next time.